always got the same answer. And this was the question. Did you know it was there? And the answer was always yes. It's what we call a counterintuitive problem. Why are people stabbing themselves in the hands if they know that it's there? You have three cups, knife is under one of them. Why are they going bam and stabbing themselves like this? And the reason I have deduced is because in magic we are very used to trying to find a hidden object. If I do a card trick, I have somebody pick a card, I do controls to try to control that card so I can then go, there's your card, okay? Almost all of magic is based on the idea of a control and keeping that hidden object always at hand and ready to reveal. Coin magic, etc. So when you do a trick where you have like a knife under th one of three cups, your goal is to know where that knife is. That's your first goal, know where the knife is. The second goal is to not hurt yourself with the knife. That is totally in reverse, in my opinion. Have you ever burned yourself on a flame? Yes. Intentionally? No. Have you like seen the flame and put your hand in there? You're the wrong person to ask this. <laughs> Normally we don't stick our hand in a fire. We'll burn ourselves on a stove, a hot stove, because we don't realize it's hot. But when you see fire, most people when they see fire, they don't go, what's going to happen? Unless they're G. Gordon Liddy. Okay? You don't put your hand in a fire because you see that it's on fire. The unseen danger, the danger you cannot see, the rattlesnake in your shoe, okay, the dirty doorknob, ooh, you know, that somebody sneezed on, okay, or the knife blade under the cup is unseen. It's not tapping into the regular part of your brain. It's you have secondary information to tell you that it's there. Secondary information to tell you that you don't see it, so it's not as dangerous to you. You don't pick a knife and go, what will this do? Ooh, you don't do that, okay? It's why after millions of years of evolution we're still around here because those of us that would do that didn't have children. Um, so I knew for this trick to work, for me to come up here and bring up a volunteer and to risk your life, not my own, I needed a surefire method. And I've heard some surefire methods that sound like not quite surefire to me. And for me, the psychology is I have to see the pencil at all times. So I have to see the pencil. Okay, if I cannot see the pencil, I cannot be sure where the pencil is. So this is what I did. And I was so proud of myself because I thought I was so clever and I realized that actually all I did was reinvented the trick of bank night. And I tear a slit in, uh, we use this end, I tear a slit in the back of the envelope like that. I used to use an X-Acto blade to cut it, but nobody cared. Um, I have a slit there, so when I take the pencil and I openly place the pencil inside of there, I'm actually sliding it in through the back there, okay? So the pencil goes in there, I can see the pencil at all times. Okay, guess what I'm never going to do? I'm never going to give Tyler an envelope with a pencil in it and tell him to stab himself. Probably. Okay, not unintentionally. Okay, so I close this up and I'll, I can look at that. It's for all the mommies out there. Um, we're the daddies, we're not going to judge. Okay, I close these, I got all this shut and after I seal that inside of there, gravity keeps that from falling out. And so I've now I got, we'll use three envelopes here because we're lazy. I crumple these up like so. And now what I want to do is I bring them up so the danger side is there. You want to be careful that your pencil does not slide out. That would be bad, okay? So I just keep this in angle. I hold on to this envelopes and I give them a little mix up. And I explain it doesn't matter if I know, it just matters that you don't know, okay? Now even from there, like, you know, the angles are pretty good. If I do that, you can see, but from there, we're in a pretty good position, okay? Yep. So. The pencil's in position number one. People tend to pick like two or three or whatever, but he went for one, which is fine. So he says, I want envelope number one. Now what do I do? He chose one. How do I handle a situation? The pencil's in envelope number one. It's a panic. What do we do? The trick's ruined, right? It's ruined. I'm as well just give it up right now. Wrong. Have hope, little one. I just pull this up like that. And there's the pencil. I used to put tape on there and all that, and I just realized, you know what you need to do is just practice. And then it works. So now I've got this, and I go, where do you want it? I, I stab myself, so I'd be like, ugh, okay. Or sometimes I have somebody put their hand on the table, and I do this, I go like, ugh, <laughs> darn it. Um, so now I go there. So now we've got, it's now one or two, and I'm going to do the same thing, is I'm just going to slide this, pull this, pen, pull this envelope up. Now the pencil's back there. Ugh, do the noise. Ugh, everybody, do the noise. <laughs> It was for you guys. Um, so now I've got the last pencil. And then this was a, a later thing I developed, which I did not put into. It's not on the DVD. It's not anywhere. This is the first time I'm tipping this is here. Um, 
And that is, I had the pencil here, and I thought, okay, I, normally I just do the reveal. I thought, oh, you know, it's better if I go, listen, I would never harm you. I'd never let anything happen to you. You're too precious, too precious. As you can see, the pencil is right there, and everybody stares at my butt, and there's no pencil. And I do, what the? And you get this, uh-oh. <laughs> And now this is the cool part. The pencil's in back, but we create the idea of the pencil's inside by pulling down on this corner, and it looks like it just slid through the envelope. And I pull the pencil out, and I'm like, there you go. And this falls on the ground. There's nothing to see. And there you go. Yay! All right. Thank you. Tyler, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Any questions? Yes, sir. Do you ever do that in conjunction with the pencil to the lip trick? Oh, the pencil? That, uh, no, you could. You could. Okay. Yeah, that's, I could do that. Do uh, you guys want some more? You want some more magic? Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Now we got a special request from online for a pencil through cheek. Okay. <laughs> for you guys. Uh, normally, I don't use a sharpened pencil. <laughs> I haven't done this in forever. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story after I do this. Uh, I haven't done this, so it may look like not very good. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, in my, my wilder days, I actually had a piercing done here. It's hard to see. Uh, it's called the high cheekbone piercing. And uh, uh, true story, uh, this was on my DVD Shock Effects, which is a great DVD, by the way. It's jam-packed with a lot of fantastic magic. Um, my mother has never seen any of my magic DVDs. That was the first DVD I did, and I think this was the first trick, and she saw the pencil go towards my cheek. She shut it off and said, no, I'm not going to watch this. <laughs> Everybody's a critic. Um, so, try this. Oh. Car. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 I think it would have been better if I had to take my clothes off, guys. Come on. All right. So, ah, uh, graphite. Ugh. Ugh. So, uh, this trick came about because, like, you've seen the one, like, the thumb through the ear trick and all that. I was, a uh, I was standing in my bathroom one day with a pencil going, I wonder what I could do with a pencil. <laughs> it's a fair question, okay? And I thought, you know, what can I do with a pencil in my face? And so I, I played it like a, 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 a tongue thing and some other stuff. And I thought, yeah, I thought about that thing with the ear. And I said, what if I, what's like malleable on my face? And so I thought like, what if I, what if I kind of did the same thing? So, well, I don't know. You, you, you take it and you like literally 